Hello property lovers, welcome to Property Focus, your window into the world of architecture, building construction and real estate. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's episode we examine a symbol of modernity that gives buildings and homes more and a more delicate and sophisticated look. It's a material that's been around for years as far back as the 18th century with the very first building of its kind called the Crystal Palace which was found in 1852 designed by architect Joseph Paxton. If you haven't already guessed it, we're looking at glass and the innovation around this magnificent material. Now, given it's transparent and it's got many uses, many developers use this glass for facades, glass for their office partitions and bigger windows for their residential projects to rely less on electricity and more on natural light lowering electricity bills and becoming more energy efficient. Now who doesn't want lower bills? But what happens when it breaks? Aside from the normal use, we're going to see an artist with the use or an artist who uses waste glass, taka taka or circular glass for lack of a better word and see how one's waste can be turned into another man's treasure with beautiful interior design, furnishings, and so much more. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Peter Ngigi. They say once you break glass, you can never piece it back. But that must have been said before that person met Anselm because through his craft, element of creativity and alchemy, he's not only put these pieces together in art form, he's created gems. And I had a chat with him and I'm going to have a chat with him right here so you could just hear what he has to say about this decorative material. Welcome to Property Focus Anselm. So hi Peter, good to be here or with you guys on your show. Um, my name is Anselm, Anselm Crows from Kitengela Hot Glass here in sunny Kajiado and uh, we've been in the business for about 30 years. Tell us about this operation. So it's evolved kind of organically. Um, it started with a need to use uh, molten glass as a craft medium in Kenya and we make prosaic tableware, all sorts of um, um, stuff that you would use from day to day like tumblers and jugs and vases and bowls and such. And, uh, and it's, we, we've evolved to other things that you see around you, so tab actual tables, chairs, panels, chandeliers, lighting, there's all kinds of uh, um, diverse other disciplines that we engage in. We've got about 50 people working here. Now about your latest project. You make all these things. Tell us about that. The, the last piece we made was for a company in the industrial area and they uh, needed a signature piece for their new um, kind of waiting area, office building, um, corporate HQ, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we did a huge 4.5 meter hanging in the style of Del Chihuly. Anselm, what inspires you with your designs? Um, we, we, we're driven a lot by customer suggestion. Um, my personal inspiration comes from the things I see around me, from nature. The material itself is very inspiring. It's, it's very limiting and very inspiring, so there's only a certain amount of things that you can do with it, and so you have to work within a parameter of plasticity and and possibility and kind of pragmatism in the how the the stuff behaves mm -hmm. um, so size is a limitation yes. the biology of how heavy a piece is and how much you can do with it um, the complexity of, of thinness is another limitation um, so the material it's, is a is a good guideline um, the, there's there's so much actually in in the way of inspiration, especially with the, the sort of connected world that we live in at the moment, the sort of links that we have with other artists. I find other artists inspiring, um, other glassmakers, 
yeah, just the world around us, really. So what's the process to making some of these items? It's relatively straightforward to make these items, but it involves some fairly kind of hectic temperatures and some pretty old school processes. So we will, we all, one of the key factors is that we use recycled glass. So that's one of the things that actually sets us aside from quite a lot of normal glass makers. Recycled glass isn't really very forgiving in its molten state. It freezes very quickly. You've only got a narrow sort of band of time to work in. So you've got to work a little bit kind of rougher or quicker, more forgiving of what might be regarded as imperfections or variances in thickness or perhaps bubbles or tool marks or such like. Um, we would get scrap glass, so mainly window or bottle glass. Um, wash it, sort it into you know, clear windows or green bottles. It's, there's not a huge variety in color. Um, and then we throw it into our furnace in the evening and that melts overnight. The air bubbles boil out and in the morning we have a 1200 degree kind of soup of glass from which we pull the material out, like picking up honey on a spoon and do whatever it is we need to do with it. If we are blowing it into an object or casting it for slabs for our tables or making beads out of it or elements for a chandelier or anything that we happen to need or what our customers need. Now, what has been your experience with decorative glass over the last 30 years, he said? We've had to create our market because um, basically it was a misconception that the church was the only place that you could have colored glass in. And this was generally because the church was rich enough to afford it, to strike awe into the hearts of their parishioners with the beautiful shafts of colored light. And I've, been, I've spent 30 years trying to kind of break that misconception by saying actually it's available to anybody really who wants to put it in their houses or office buildings or wherever, wherever you can kind of put it into a build. So, and, and that's in, in the building sense, but also in sort of free form stuff. This technique called Dal de Verre, which is glass and concrete, is incredibly versatile, very strong stuff. I'm sitting on a Dal de Verre chair, so it's strong enough to handle a significant weight. Um, the tables are, you know, I give them a lifetime guarantee. If your table, something happens to it, you can bring it back and I'll replace it. And, and again, then for windows and panels and stuff, it's really durable. And it also has a mesh of steel inside it so that that kind of acts as a burglar proofing should, you, should it be required by the client. Mm -hmm. Ansem, what are some of the new trends that you're carving out being appropriator in this space? Accessibility to light and color, I think. It, it, it's not the purvey of the super wealthy. It's not something that you just can look at from afar or on television. It's here in Kenya and you can have it in your house. Well, why don't you give us your closing remarks or your parting shots? Don't limit yourself. Yeah. Get, get some color in your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on to the show. Wonderful. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Peter. And there you have it from the proprietor of decorative glass. It is such a beautiful material and such elaborate designs. Well, we're going to take a short commercial break, but when we're back, we've got more on this decorative glass. Stay tuned. Welcome back and still on glass, we have an artist who's using glass to just stimulate your spaces with the decorative glass. Now let's hear what he had to say. So I'm here with Tony Mugo to tell us a little bit more about decorative glass. I'm sure you can see some of the lovely pieces that are here with me. Welcome to Property Focus, Tony. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Tell us about yourself. I'm Tony Mugo, yes. an artist who works with glass as my canvas. And I've been doing this since 1992. And uh, it's a medium I enjoy working with. I think it's, it offers a lot of uh, possibilities. Yeah. And uh, it, gifts of the natural world come out more vividly mm -hmm. through this material. Amazing. So tell us, what are some of the things you're doing with decorative glass? 
I started off with glass. Um, I would say glass found me because it, it wasn't something I was looking out for. I was um, a pure science student, majored in uh, sciences and agriculture. <laughs> I come from a military family, so you can see how that is going. Yeah. And then um, I met a, a lady at Londro House many years ago in 92, yes. who was training people in glass engraving. And I was sold. When I first saw first crystal engraved glass, that was it. What are some of the different techniques you're infusing with glass? Techniques are plenty, yeah, and they're always being discovered, yeah. So glass is um, it's an amazing material. I, I find that glass is one of those things that when you think you know it, then you still realize there's a lot to learn about it, yeah. So first of all, the things you can do with glass, which is you can etch it, you can uh, frost it, you can fuse it, you can, uh, but you, um, you can use it in stained glass, like what I do. So the, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. uh, but you said you're more of warm glass than hot glass. Yeah. More of cold glass, cold glass. and warm glass. And warm yeah. glass. Yes. Well, 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 what does that mean? <laughs> So cold glass is where we use very little heat yes. when you're processing uh, or working with the material. Yes. For example, when you're doing um, um, leaded glass, yes. what we do is we cut glass and we piece it together using lead kims. Mm -hmm. And there's hardly much heat or any used in, in that process. Okay. Warm glass comes in where you want to add surface value to the glass you're working with. Yes. Say, so for example, you want to paint on it put it in the kiln and we use uh, metal oxides yes. to fire uh, the paint and infuse it okay. into the glass. Yes. So we fire up to temperatures of about 700 degrees mm -hmm. to 600 degrees depending on the, on the paint medium you're using. Yes. So that's what we refer to as warm glass. Yeah, okay. So we use kilns yes. but we don't get to hot glass mm -hmm. temperatures yeah, where you're using over a thousand degrees centigrade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about your latest project. So um, right now I'm working on a, this beautiful giraffe piece. Okay. Yeah, it's for a client. Uh -huh. And it's going to involve quite a bit of a painting process uh -huh. and also a bit of quite a lot of leading. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is early days. Uh -huh. So what we do is start with a small sketch drawing. So you use leading for where? This point to, where? to put the pieces together. Okay. So all these are individual pieces okay. which I'll eventually uh -huh. put together. Okay. Yeah. And I have a liturgical project okay. uh, for a church, yes. um, and I'm doing two sacristy windows. How long does it take to do this? Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a labor of love, yeah. yeah. It takes quite a bit of time. Yes. So because the painting process is, uh, is quite intense, yes. you have to build up layers. Okay. It's not like painting on paper or canvas, okay. because um, you, you paint in thin layers. So you do your first outlines, mm -hmm. put them in the oven, mm -hmm. fire the paint in, yes. and then build up your tone on value mm -hmm. slowly. Wow. Yeah, You cannot do heavy layers on glass. In terms of cost, how much would it ordinarily cost for something like this? So we, we have different ways of working out prices. Yeah? So one is a bit more scientific where you work out on a square foot price. So you calculate the surface area of your window, yes. which could be could range from as low as six thousand okay. up to ten thousand, depending yes. on many things: glass, yes. uh, labor, and there are pieces where you don't even use that method, where you just you charge it as a work of art. Mm -hmm. You feel the price for it, and you charge it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you mentioned some of this glass is not even available locally. Yes, quite a number of, uh, some of the nicer colors that yes. we, we use in stained glass mm -hmm. are not locally available. Yes. So we have to import them, yeah, and, and hence the cost, yeah. From Europe? Mostly uh, from the U.S., yeah. Okay. So we, we, we import mm -hmm. quite a number from, from, uh, from the U.S., yes. and sometimes you can get uh, some glasses from Germany. Okay. Yeah. Any advice you'd like to give your viewers right now? I find uh, stained glass is, uh, is like perfect marriage yes. 
between architecture and glass. Mm -hmm. So it works very well with uh, architectural themes. Yes. And you could have a view that is not nice and you want to block a view. You can have something decorative on that window yes. so it, en it becomes like a feature piece on, in the house. Yes. Or if you want to enhance a view as well, mm -hmm. you can use stained glass for those purposes. So yeah, and um, as I, we say, it, it's music in space. Yes. So it's something beautiful to look at. Well, Tony, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, if you live in a glass house, you know what to do. When they throw stones, make a glass car. Stay tuned. Amazing. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Now, we've seen the amazing things you could do with glass, and I thought it would be worthwhile and fitting to get into a factory to explore this magnificent material and the innovations around it. Let's go. Now, the guy I'm here to meet has been in the business for quite some time doing some research and now running a fully fledged factory manufacturing this element we want to find out about. Brilliant. Welcome to Property Focus. Thank you, Peter. Yes. And welcome to our factory. We're glad to be here. Tell us about yourself. My name is Jayant Rogwani. Mm -hmm. I'm the director at uh, Aloglass Africa okay. Limited. Mm -hmm. And I am an enthusiastic uh, individual who is trying to see how the young generations can uh, take on more responsibilities and support yes. the construction sector. Good. Tell us about glass. What is it made of? Funny enough, Peter, I would mm -hmm. assume a lot of the people who can feel, touch glass, see glass, everything, they might not know what it is made of. Mm -hmm. So surprisingly, it's a raw material, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it's been made of, mm -hmm. and it's sand. Mm -hmm. This is the sand that you see, uh, not on the beach, obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's the sand. Obviously, you can't have glass made on the beach, but sand which is heated up to almost about 1700 degrees Celsius, Okay. where it becomes in a liquid state. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, when the sand is heated up, it becomes liquidified and we then uh, cool it. But then it's layered up and cooled down in sheets. So the thing is sand and uh, other materials added like lime, soda ash, actually give the capacity of the sand to be formed into a product which is called the glass. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of its uses, what are some of the trends of glass in the industry today? I would put it in like the word to say ABC. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I would say mm -hmm. A for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. The trend in glass is aesthetics. Why it's coming up to say glass is not what we used to have uh, centuries ago. Yeah. When it evolved, glass was just that. Aesthetically, glass is being enhanced the view of it, the look of it, the feel of it. Mm -hmm. You're having colored glasses, you're having etched glasses, you're having actually CNC sort of ways of actually uh, using glass. Mm -hmm. The other thing is bigger mm -hmm. is better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I would say now architects, interior designers, and even clients or individuals like ourselves want big panes of glasses to be put in buildings to showcase panoramic views, unobstructed views, because the, uh, the trend has come to say that we want unparalleled views, nothing obstructing. We want to see as if yes. there is nothing in between us and nature, mm -hmm. and nothing in between us and the people outside. Yes. So that is there that bigger mm -hmm. pieces of glasses, which are now better in terms of performances, is there. And the other new trend, I would say, is curved glass. Glass, glass is actually being mm. curved mm -hmm. to suit natures of buildings, to suit natures of balusters, to suit natures of cubicles, having lifts now mm. with curved glasses, yes. taking you as if you have a feel of a time capsule. You're going through a building of a hundred stories, imagine, and then you're passing through a capsule. Mm -hmm. The look, the feel, mm -hmm. the entire experience mm -hmm. of curved glass is the new trend, I would say. How then do you make it so strong? Okay, mm -hmm. in terms of making it strong, yes. there is processes mm -hmm. that we go through. There is a process of toughening, lamination. You actually have that process for the glass to actually go through that because okay. glass as it is, it's a yes. very fragile material. Yes. But when you pass it through a certain process, 
it gives us opportunity to sort of like you know enhance its properties okay and it's combated with that you can actually assist the glass to be more uh, user friendly mm -hmm. more combustible mm -hmm. in terms of uh, fire resistant bulletproof glasses because when you apply layers of glasses and special coatings for it to perform to its best and also have the structural element mm -hmm. in there okay yeah interesting reflection tell us about that how do you avoid that in traffic today you know light not reflecting off a building how do you how do you avoid that for the reflection yes mm -hmm. you see glass is something which is very transparent so yes. you'd actually if there is any light it would mm -hmm. definitely pass through yes but there is ways of actually how we can actually reduce that mm -hmm. um, by putting the PVB films okay. on the glass okay. it gives us an opportunity to sort of actually assist in mm -hmm. terms of reducing the level of glare the level yes. of uh, rays that do pass through so okay. even thermally in terms of that reflection the heat is reflected back again so when you're inside a room in an office in an environment where you have temperature controls you don't want the outside temperatures to sort of like start uh, coming the into building. the building okay. and then building temperatures which are uh, ambient temperatures yes. to be then transmitted outside mm -hmm. so it gives us a very good opportunity to have those and glass mm -hmm. um, is revolutionizing itself so we see that if we have to use the PVB films there are so many different types and elements that mm -hmm. can be used mm -hmm. in terms of layering glass in different stages in different thicknesses uh, using different types of PVB films yes. to combat that. Okay. Yes. And it's sort of like a sandwich approach, you said. You put the PVB yes. inside. Yes. So okay. it's sandwiched in between two pieces and two panes of glass. Yes. And then it's heated up and then it's actually sandwiched. Okay. So basically... Heat coming in, reflects Flexing out. out. And then from inside, uh, making in. sure that anything which is the temperature inside mm -hmm. stays within the inside environment yes and any harsh environments okay we, uh, can actually combat <clears throat> and make sure it's outside okay absolutely amazing parting shots for our viewers i would say to uh, everyone i would say glass is not complicated okay. yes everyone makes it complicated mm -hmm. you just need to know it has a lot of window of opportunities mm -hmm. and go and get it absolutely open amazing. up your window of opportunities mm -hmm. and you'll be fine Thank you very much, Jayant. Glad to have had you on the show. Thank you, Peter. It Brilliant. was a pleasure. Thank Absolutely you very much. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I didn't know glass was made out of sand. And you've just had it from Jayant. You know, go out there. Glass is the window of opportunities. And shatter the glass ceiling. Stay tuned. And that is how color is louder than words. It's been a superb episode. Most informative, actually glass in all its brilliance now if you want more topics addressed on the show reach out to us on our social media handles right below the screen and we'll be more than happy to get more of these guests and topics on the show it's been most delightful see you next week same time same place right here at 5 30. i've been your host peter ngigi <music>